First, I want to start off by saying, Coach Kelly, I, I really appreciate you taking the time out your busy schedule um, to sit down with me, man, and kind of talk about your path. Uh, we're going to call this uh, BK's path. <laughs> well, it's been, it's been a... It's been a path that has been um, an interesting journey, I will say that, but one that, uh, you know, has taken me here, and it's, it's exciting. No doubt. Um, every podcast I do, especially with coaches, especially some out of your stature, I always like to go back in your journey, man. Take me back to when you grew up in Everett, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and uh, when you fell in love with the game of football, and how has it got you to where you at today? Well, you know, it's kind of interesting, you know, when you go full circle, you know, I grew up in a neighborhood that was very similar to some of the neighborhoods right here in, in the greater Baton Rouge area. Came from a, a lower middle class family um, and, you know, staying outside, playing in the fields, playing games, pick up games, uh, whether it was baseball or whether it was football. Uh, was what I did as a kid and and so you know I kind of had that you know love for for any of the games mm -hmm. you know and then being in a, a you know a big city you know like Boston mm -hmm. you so know, how far is Everett from Boston 10 minutes gotcha you know what I mean okay, so no. we're just right outside Boston mm -hmm. and you know so you had all the pro sports yep. you know whether it was the Celtics or it was the Bruins or you know the Red Sox they had the Patriots you had all of that there so you grew up a sports fan and many like many of the kids here you know mm -hmm. growing up Saints fans or you know whatever they were you know you were living vicariously through the time and so it's it's much like the kids growing up here today no doubt no doubt how has your experience been thus far in the south the different traditions we have down here compared to being up north when you was at Notre Dame in the Midwest and things like that and being in the Boston area? Well, I think it's a lot similar to where I grew up uh, on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's much more about faith and family. It's much more about, um, you know, the, the, the sports, you know, and, and, and that was really, as I mentioned earlier, the, that's what I grew up on, right. you know. You know, we went to church and as a family on, on Sundays, uh, we watched the games, we had big dinners together. We didn't have crawfish boils, mm. uh, you know what I mean? We were missing that, but we had, you know, we had clam boils, <laughs> you know, because that's, oh yeah, I had clams. Come on. Oh yeah. I've never heard of a clam boil. Oh yeah, we had a clam boil. And uh, it's, 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 it's the cheaper cousin to crawfish. Okay. Okay. You know? Maybe you need to bring that tradition down here. Well, I, you know, I don't know that's going to stick because <laughs> you're not going to get great clams. But but the same thing, right? right? It was the family together, you know, you know, everybody together. Maybe you had the game on, maybe you didn't, but, you know, it was just, it was family, right? And you got together and then during during the week, you know, you had your games, you know, you went to school and, and so that was a lot closer. When I got to the Midwest, I was working. Right. You know what I mean? It, it, it was it, it was my job. Mm -hmm. it, it was it was football. It was you know developing programs. Mm -hmm. And so coming back here, it's it's a lot more like the family and growing up when I grew up on the East Coast. I think, and I'll keep using this word, the path. I th I feel like your path is very unique. You went to a small school in Assumption College, yep. played linebacker, and then as soon as you finished playing, you transitioned into coaching. And you was a defensive coordinator, right? Yes. I've always known you as an offensive guy. So right. tell me how that helped you to where you had to be, going to a small school, going right into coaching, being a defensive coordinator, and now you kind of are known as an offensive guy these days. Well, what happened during that transition is that, you know, I was a defensive coordinator, I was a defensive back coach. Um, my, my first jobs in the profession were on the defensive side of the ball. And then... I got the head coaching job when I was 28 years old. Uh -huh. And then I felt like as a head coach, you're responsible for the football. No doubt. You better learn offense. And so that's when I made the transition that um, I, I need to figure out offense. And so I spent my first couple of years, um, you know, I stayed on defense, but really learned the offense and the structure that I wanted to run from an offensive perspective. Even though I had defense as my background, mm -hmm. as the head coach, I wanted to be able to make those decisions and have that 
understanding of how to control the game from an offensive standpoint. And then that's when I transitioned into offense. And then you was coaching softball too. Like how did that? So that, that that actually gave me my first opportunity to coach. At Assumption to get a GA job, the only one that was available was the women's softball job, and that, as you know, is a spring sport. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the job came open in the spring, and the the AD said, "Look." If you take this woman's job that nobody wanted at the time, and you do a good job here, you're auditioning for the GA job that's gonna open in the fall. So I took the, the women's softball job, and um, you know we did a pretty good job with it, and that was my audition to get the GA job that opened in the fall, and then got the GA job in the fall, and then the rest is kinda what we said uh, many, many times is history. It makes so it's, it makes so much sense to me why you've had so much success because you're so well rounded. I don't think I know any head coaches that coach softball. <laughs> well, and I know that probably played a part on how you do things these days too. Well, it's still about communication, right? It's yep. still about getting people to do things that um, you know they they might not have done on their own, right? right? And so um, I, I was. I was given an opportunity and and took advantage of it, and and then the, it just opened a door for me. And you just take those chances, and you know, I, I bet on myself, right? And, and and said that this is what I want to do, and it, it it led me into the the football end of things. All we need is an opportunity. Uh, man, I want I want to go back to I felt like was a a pivotal point in your career when. Your wife got diagnosed with breast cancer. You're coaching college football, man. You're trying to be the best you can be in that. Uh, take me back to how you was able to deal with your wife having breast cancer, your kids dealing with it, and trying to run a program. Yeah, well, that that was that was probably the the most difficult time, but probably the time that it, it built um, a lot of the the traits that I have today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had a young family. We only had two kids the first time that she, she had cancer. Um, and, and, you know, she got it at a young age. You know, she was only in her 30s. Right. Um, and, 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 you know, I was the head coach. And I think what it, what it, it showed me more than anything else is that this game, um, n not to take things, um, you know, so that it's life or death. You know what I mean? There are big things, and mm -hmm. then there are big things. Thanks. And and so I think it really allowed me to look at situations that occur um, in the game, um, and 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 put it in perspective. Because my wife was, you know, fighting for her life, and right. you know, she's like, "Look, you got to go take care of your football team. I'll take care of what I got to take care of." And and. Um, you know, we had a great support system in place where we had friends and relatives taking care of. She goes, you need to go take care of the football team. And so I think what it did is when I saw a kid that, you know, was complaining because we had to run a couple of gassers, <laughs> it, it kind of puts it in perspective, like, dude, run through the line. I think you could do that. Yeah, yeah. When you put it in perspective like <laughs> when that. When you put it in that kind of perspective, you know what I mean? You're like, I think you can run through the line. If, if you don't want to run through the line, you can go do something else. Right, right, right. Um, what, had, what makes the path at LSU so special? And what did you, what didn't you know about this place that you know now that makes it special in your mind? Well, I, I think first and foremost, when you, when you talk about a path, you, you, you have to talk about what can this opportunity give a young man that when he travels this, mm -hmm. what what comes out on the other end? I think for many years, it was just football. Right. It was just the NFL. It was all or nothing. I either, I'm gonna make it in the NFL, I'm gonna be a superstar in the NFL, or, or nothing else. So I, I think what needed to happen is we needed to define what that path was. And the path was building your identity. Building your identity as a football player. That the man inside the jersey is as important as the man outside that jersey. Right. Yeah. And, and so I think when we took time to really explain it to our players, that you're valued as much as 
a person that I want you to walk around this campus. You don't need a jersey. No doubt. They know who you are based upon how you impact the community, what you do in the classroom, what you do outside of football. And I think that that's what the path is. So when they're done here and they leave here, they feel great that they can stand on their own two feet and it just doesn't have to be football. Agreed. Um, man, with so many changes to college football, because you've been in it for a long time and it's, it's forever evolving. And if you don't evolve with the game, you'll get left behind. What does LSU have to do in your mind to stay as one of the elite programs with the transfer portal, NIL, and just all these different revolving doors we have? Well, I think first and foremost, don't lose what the real mandate is. And, and that is our mission is to graduate champions. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't lose that. This is still about graduating young men right no doubt. and 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 playing for championships and and how do you do that right you you have to develop the traits necessary on a day-to-day -day basis with these young men let's not let nil or dollars get in the way of that right that's going to get in the way of developing 18 to 21 year olds they're not 25 they're not 30 they're not professionals yet they will be someday mm -hmm. so we still have a job to do here mm -hmm. just as high school coaches do an incredible job of of mentoring and developing uh, the high school kids we still have a job as well and and look that job got difficult because there weren't rules and 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 it became much more um i think clouded that's going to clear up here this this court case is going to get settled mm -hmm. and and i think we're going to find ourselves back in a very good position where we can get back to what college is about, and, and that is to graduate our players and play for championships. So don't lose your way. Um, don't get sold that this game is just going to be about um, you know paying your players. That's not what's going to happen here. And, and I think as, as long as, as we continue to, to move forward and understand that, we're going to be in good shape. Um, and it's funny you say that, and I made a post about it. I thought a lot of people took out of context what you said when you say, you, when you come to LSU, we're not paying players to come here. It, it's bigger than that. And I, I, I'm glad you uh, you touched on what's, the, what's really important when you come to a school like LSU. Yeah, now look, we're, we're gonna allow you and, and give you an opportunity to have market value relative to NIL. And we have a, we have a great collective. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but if you're not interested in your development, if you're not interested in an identity outside of football, if you're not interested in engaging within our culture and all you're interested in is what you're gonna get paid, that's not what we're interested in. So if, if you wanna be part of this program, you, you have to engage all the things. You have to be wanting to be part of the path. And then along the way, those other things will come as well. Um, what, what my uh, problem was is that when you have um, you know, third parties that come in and, and don't have the self-interest of the, the young man, and and he's making um, you know a living off of mm -hmm. the young man. Uh, that's where I have a problem, and and I made that clear. You know, people are going to take whatever they see and and run with yep. it. Um, I think the people that really clearly understood that um, understood what I was talking. No about. doubt, no doubt. Um, in year three of the path. Yes. What does this, what does this LSU program look like? And is it aligning to what you thought it would look like in year three when you took the job? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think the habits of our football team are, are so much more aligned to what a championship habit looks like, and that is consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, championships are built on consistency uh, and the application of, of all of those traits, which is an attention to detail and, and, and having um, a great attitude and a great work ethic, all of those things, it's, it's consistency. And so our habits now are starting to meet that. That's championship level football. So going into year three, um, that foundation is really solid. Now, that doesn't ensure you're going to win all your football games. All that ensures is that you've put yourself now in a position where you can go out mm -hmm. and have a really good opportunity to win on Saturdays. And that's what we've done. Now, we gotta go catch it and we gotta throw it 
You know, we got to kick it. We got to make plays. We got to do those things that require you to do on Saturdays. But the program now is poised and put itself in position to go do those things and win football games on Saturdays. My last question for you, man, before we get into BK's favorites. <laughs> uh, talk about how special it was, man, to have Jaden Daniels this past season be a Heisman Trophy winner and go number two in the draft. Malik went eight? Yeah, uh, six. Six, I'm sorry. Six, I'm, yeah, so, I'm sorry, six. Malik. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, His agent's not sorry. <laughs> He's happy. Right. Brian Thomas going 23, Mason going 48 in the second yeah. round, Jordan Jefferson, and, and so forth and so forth. How, how special was that to see those kids um, get drafted and, and have three going the first round and continue that tradition? Yeah, three first rounders, four in the top 50. Uh, you know, I mean, four in the top 50 is pretty special. Um, when you think of all the programs, to have four of your players go in the top 50, I think is, you know, a testament to what we're doing. And, and certainly hats off to these kids. They, they earned it. Like, there's no pretending in the first round. Right. You are, look, <laughs> when, when they finish their last game here, and I can tell you because I'm on the other end of the phone, they are trying to find everything to bring these kids down. <laughs> I mean, they don't want to pay them uh, the money they're going to have to pay them. It, it's crazy the misinformation that's out there on these kids that's just not accurate, but they stood up to all of that scrutiny because they deserved it. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the credit goes to these kids first and foremost. And then we, we helped develop them and put them in a position that they could stand up to that scrutiny. Right. And um, just proud of them, proud of what they've accomplished. Now, now the next step is go do this on a consistent basis because that's the NFL, as we all know, not for long. You got to go do it now. And I think they're poised to do that. No doubt, no doubt. New change favors, man. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Favorite football player of all time, no matter what level. Oh, my God, that is such a hard question because, you know, you just watch <laughs> so much football. I mean, look, I, 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 I span a lot of years of watching, you know, football. And, and then there's those years where, you know, you're, you're so tied up in it that mm -hmm. you, you don't see it. Yep. But one of the all-time favorites for me was Barry Sanders. Oh, that's a good one. I mean, he just, he would do things that I just did not think was possible. And I got a chance to see him a little bit being in the Midwest and mm -hmm. being in Michigan and, mm -hmm. and getting a chance to know him a little bit. Um, you know, you know, he, he just had that kind of career um, that was magical. No doubt. Favorite coach of all time that had the most impact on you? Uh, you know, I had a high school coach uh, who was an ex-Marine. Mm. His name was Fred Glatz. And, um, Give him his flowers. Yes, and and he he had a huge influence on me. He he really gave me, I think, the the love for wanting to coach, mm -hmm. you know. And, and and then my college coach Bernie Gahan, uh, who since passed away, who coached me, uh, and 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 I think those two influenced me in, in a sense one gave me the passion to want to coach and the other one gave me an insight into how to coach players because my relationship with my college coach was was so strong uh -huh. because of the way he coached me and 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 it wasn't the same and, you know he knew when to lean on me uh -huh. and 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 uh, when to praise me uh -huh. uh, and when to kick me in the butt um, and, and I think those two really influenced me the most. I know you're a big wine drinker, man. I, I hope you I hope you put me... I got to be careful with wine. You know, it's a <laughs> couple of days a week. But I hope you can put me on game because I've been looking for a good wine, man, especially for my mom, man. She always asks me about some good wine. Favorite wine to drink? Well, are we talking about... Uh, are we talking about California wines? Are we talking about French wines? I see how my history on the wine. Are we talking about Italian wines? A good red well, wine. A good red wine. Yeah, let me go red. Well, if you're talking about a Napa, okay, which you know California red wine, you know, I, I just I think you probably got to go to the Godfather in in terms of California reds. 
and 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 that would be opus opus o p u s if you get opus red wine um give me a call i'll, I'll be with you <laughs> <laughs> definitely favorite shoe or sneaker Ooh, that that you know i gotta tell you in my long career i've had them all now uh, I've even worn spot belts. Oh, yeah, I know. It's, 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 it, that's the versatility, a though. That's the versatility. But I've had them all from Reeboks to Under Armour to Adidas. I like what you've been wearing for the Tiger Walk, though. I, I must well, that's see. where I was going to go. Ah. The, 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 the brand to me that just continues to show itself is the versatility of Nike. And, and its ability to touch all of the different categories. Mm -hmm. I got my Cactus Jacks, you know. Mm. I mean, I, I got a little bit of everything. And if you got a good shoe game, you can hang in there with these young guys. You can fool them a little bit. You could. If you got a good shoe That's game. That's part of it. You got to fool them a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Favorite artist to listen to? Whew. I have so many. Um, and I like everything from, you know, country to jazz uh you know we have we have a, a a baby grand piano in our home now okay and and it's got it's got a uh what's called a uh, disc laver which um allows you to do uh songs and and the piano plays itself what oh it's crazy must cost a lot of money well no nil oh, okay Okay. And okay. I am. Okay. Know. Okay. Um, but my point being is that we we've, we've been listening to a lot of different music, and so you know you you hear so much on you know when you listen to your phone and and you put your 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 headphones in, but when you listen to keyboard music, mm -hmm. it changes because you start to listen to so much more jazz mm -hmm. and contemporary music, mm -hmm. um, and and so that the genres kind of change for me, but I mean, goodness. I, if if I was if I had to say right now, I always come back to my my roots, and it would probably be Bruce Springsteen. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm gonna put you on somebody. I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with him, Todd Adams. Yes, he's a Todd Adams. Yes, he's a he's a magnificent piano player, and he can do the keyboard too. Yeah, does a great job. Has the long hair. Anytime he's somewhere, I gotta be there. Todd Adams. Todd Adams. Look him up. I'm, I'm, look him I'm up. gonna look him up today. Next time I see you, I want you to tell me what you I think. will let you know about he, Todd he Adams. Is, he is awesome. He is awesome. Last but not least, if BK wasn't coaching football, what would he be doing with his life? Well, I, I think it'd probably be something similar in that, you know, I enjoy, um, you know, being around people. And so I started really thinking that I was gonna go into politics. And and w what I didn't like about the politics was the kind of it, it just seemed to be like um, th there was this um, I don't know scripted kind mm. of process that I didn't like. There was a uh, it was it authentic. Know, it didn't. That's mm. a great word. It, yeah. it just didn't feel authentic yeah. enough to I me. I would want to be in something that where you could make a difference. Right. And and I get a chance to make a difference in young men's lives every day. I'd want to be in in some kind of field where I could make a difference in in young men's lives. And so, if it's not this, maybe ministry. Mm -hmm. um, something to that to that level. You need to give it, uh, Mr. Prescott. I well, I, maybe maybe we could uh, share a sermon together. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Mr. Prescott. Every time I see him when I'm around, man, I always tell him to make sure he's praying for me. <laughs> I got a lot of people praying for me. Yeah, today, yeah, yeah. Like I said, man, uh, before this podcast, I appreciate you taking the time out your business schedule to do it, man. Uh, um, in year three, man, I'm rooting for you guys. I, I know that y'all will be in that in that 12 team playoff. We're going to, we're going to, that's our goal. I mean, yeah. every year it should be, LSU should be competing for one of those spots. No doubt. It's no longer, hey, let's be in the top 20. Let's go to a bowl game. It's, it's one of those 12. And that, and that's our focus. I appreciate you, man. Uh, this is BK. Chilling with BK on the path. This is G Sports. We signing out.